This line represents the world we're living in right now. But there is also an eternal future, an eternal world. And this is the eternal past. What kind of world is this eternal world? It's an eternal world of love. So, God created all things for the sake of mankind. In order to keep the earth in its place in the vast expanse of the universe, the sun is needed, and so are the other stars. The universe is needed, and so is the Milky Way. All these things are necessary. Within this vast universe, God first prepared a foundation on which life would be able to exist. And there, He created man in the image of God. Why did He do that? Love needs a partner. There needs to be a partner in love. Love needs to be poured out into something. It's more joyous to give love than to receive love. When a man and a woman love one another, if the wife complains that her husband doesn't show her any love, it actually means that she loves her husband. When you are able to give your love to someone, the person you love has to love you back for you to be happy. Happiness comes when you are able to give love. Parents love their children, don't they? But children don't know the love of their parents. Even so, because parents love their children so much, they work hard for the children and make every effort for them. They change their diapers for them, and even when their baby poos, they smile and kiss the child. At that moment, they somehow feel fully satisfied in their hearts. The most unfortunate person in this world is the person who has no one to love. So, why did God make man? It's because God is filled to the brim with love. And so he needed a recipient upon whom he could pour out his love to his heart's content. This is why God made man in his own image. Chapter 21, verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Look what it says here. A new heaven and a new earth. A new heaven and a new earth. That's here. History will proceed along its present course. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Here it says that this will be prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In other words, it will be the dwelling place of perfect love. The dwelling place of perfect love. Now look at verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. This is God's dwelling place. Is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. There will be no more dying, nor sorrow. There will be no more sadness, nor crying, no more crying over someone's death, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Look at what it says here. This is talking about a perfect world of love in which God and man will live together. A place where there is no hate, no war, no sickness, no death, and no misfortune. A perfect ideal world. God wouldn't be God unless He made such a world. Think about the people alive today. They become sick. They become tired and distressed. They fight. They worry. If this current state of man were all there is to God's intended creation and there was nothing more to it than that, there would be no need for us to believe in God. If God had made man for no reason at all and just made us suffer, be distressed, worry, be concerned, become sick and die, if that is what God is like, why would we believe in Him? That is definitely not the case. One thing you need to understand is that God's creation is still in progress right now. 
Even now, babies are born. That is creation. Babies are still being born, even now. Stars are still forming, even now. God's creation has not come to an end. And then someday, this perfect world of love will be completed. How will that happen? When a person becomes born again in the course of history. When a person is born again, he realizes the love of God right now. We live in these physical bodies, don't we? But this isn't really living. When the spirit within your physical body is born again through the Holy Spirit, at that moment, you come to know the love of God. This isn't just a theory. Usually, if you ask people to recite John chapter 3, verse 16, you'll find that they know it very well. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Who doesn't know this? They say, so God is love, but they still don't know God's love. Do you know what God's love is? People have many theories about what God's love is. They refer to it as agape, philia, and various other kinds of love, but it's useless studying such theories. Someday, if you realize the love of God and become a son of God, then you'll know God's love. When that happens, you'll be ready to go to this eternal world of love. So, at this point in time, at this point in time, the present course of history will come to an end. And when this present course of history comes to an end, the eternal world of love will begin. Not everyone in this world will be born again and become one of God's people. From amongst the many people in this world, it's only those who come to realize this truth that are born again through the Holy Spirit. When the number of those born again in this way reaches its limit, the work of salvation will come to an end in this world and the history of this world itself will also come to an end. So what is the meaning of the course of history in this world? It is the process of preparing people to be able to enter the eternal world.